I feel like overnight meme culture is more of a rarity now. And when all the stars align to create an online phenomenon, boy is it a welcome experience, especially with the way Twitter works now. I mean, go back the last five to 10 years or so and think about all of the apolitical meme tidal waves that for lack of a better word, broke the internet, which, you know, don't happen anymore. Like, when was the last time we had some version of the dress? If you've been on Twitter in the last 48 hours, you have likely seen a meme about a show called The Good Doctor, and everything around the internet's discovery of this program has been quite fascinating to me, as there's certainly a lot to chew on with the show's subject matter, which we'll get into, but to put it even more simply, this is a portal into a world of TV that most people under the age of 50 simply aren't aware of. So indulge me for a few minutes as we break down how we got here and the potential lessons we as amateur media critics can take away from such a silly, silly situation. The Good Doctor is an American medical drama television series based on a 2013 South Korean series of the same name. The show has been airing on ABC since 2017, and it's developed by actor Daniel Day Kim and David Shore, who was the creator of Fox's smash hit TV series House. The show stars Freddie Highmore of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fame as Sean Murphy, a young autistic surgeon with Savant Syndrome. Savant Syndrome is a real condition where folks who are some type of neurodivergent can possess seemingly superhuman, brilliant abilities and talents in a certain subject area or expertise field. The condition has become a trope in traditional media with Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory and Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man being notable examples. If you are currently watching this video, this show is probably not in your demographic and we'll get into that in a bit. But this show does have a legitimately earnest fandom who have been posting clips of the series on TikTok, which can be rather funny or melodramatic when taken out of a particular context. The fact that you're alive right now is evidence that you were working with dimethyl sulfate. You're a terrorist, aren't you? Speaking of taking things out of context, let's talk about how the show actually blew up on Twitter. And the answer may surprise you. The answer won't surprise you, it's literally just that Elon Musk has algorithmically programmed this hell site to make everyone on it mad about trans people literally all the time. That's it, that's the secret. Anyway, an account posted a clip from the show with a little bit of important context missing. In the clip, Sean has a hard time accepting the idea that a patient that he and another surgeon are seeing is transgender. Boy, I'm a girl. You're transgender? Yes. No, Quinn has XY chromosomes like Jared and me, not XX like you. Science says he's male. No, Quinn has gender dysphoria. Her assigned gender is not the one she identifies with. She's mismatched, Dr. Murphy. But biologically... Other than biologically, how do you know you're supposed to be a boy? Your question doesn't make sense. I'm not supposed to be anything. I am a boy. Biologically, that's it. Okay, deep tenderness at McBurney's point. Could be acute appendicitis. Murphy, get imaging to confirm. Mm -hmm. Hello. Do you wear dresses? Murphy? Don't. Quinn is a boy who thinks he's a girl. I want to know why he thinks that. Sometimes I wear dresses, but sometimes I wear leggings. Do you like the color pink? <laughs> I'm more of a purple girl. Do you play with dolls? Not since I was five, but I'm super into mermaids. Do you take dance? Murphy, 20 questions are up. I only asked four. Do you it wear doesn't perfume? Matter. The ready. Let's Do go. you always paint your nails? Let's go. Do you think he's complicated or confused? Dude, you gotta quit calling her a he. We're never going to win this competition if you're disrespecting our patient. Don't they have transgender people in Wyoming? Okay, transgender patient care was not part of my medical school curriculum. Was it part of yours? No. Quinn doesn't have appendicitis. He has testicular cancer. She. 
As you can see, the clip ends with Sean still not understanding the concept that the patient uses she, her pronouns, implying that autistic people can't understand gender identity because it isn't a black and white biological fact. Even though, and this is not me reaching, there are multiple folks online corroborating this experience, many autistic people are actually trans. Additionally, the scene is cut off at a deliberate point. At the end of the episode, Sean learns more about what it means for a patient to be trans and starts gendering her correctly. No matter what side of the ideological spectrum you're on, there is something to be mad about here, which again is the goal of Twitter right now. It's programmed for this exact kind of conversation. Ultimately, some people are mad that a trans person was even depicted on a popular TV show like this to begin with. Others are mad that without the context, the clip seems to be normalizing transphobia in the medical setting. And finally, there's the argument that I referenced earlier where the dialogue here implies that autistic people aren't capable of empathy or understanding when it comes to, you know, people that lie outside the gender binary. The debate prompted folks to take a closer look at the show and then proceed to realize how fucking bonkers it is. Now, I'm not autistic, so it's not necessarily my place to say whether or not Heimer's performance here is an accurate portrayal of an autistic person, and autistic people are not a monolith, but just at first glance, this portrayal seems to be rather over the top. In fact, it kind of reminds me of when Maddie Ziegler tried to play an autistic character and just sort of copied, you know, the most kind of out there mannerisms resulting in a really clunky and awkward performance of a nonverbal autistic character. The biggest aspect of Highmore's performance to be memed so far was the I am a surgeon scene that I showed you some parodies of up top. Basically, the context of this scene is that Dr. Han tries to prevent Sean from participating in a tumor surgery, concerned that his social awkwardness might be a liability. This prompts a rather emotional reaction where Sean tries to reaffirm his identity and why he's there in the first place. I am a surgeon! I am a surgeon! I am! I am a surgeon! I am a surgeon! Dr. Han, I am a surgeon! Uh, in the interest of fairness, I am cutting in here because I figured that if I was going to talk about the current cultural impact of this show, the least I could do was immerse myself in the world of the good doctor as much as possible to make an impression and get a sense of what the show is about. That is what I have done over the last couple days. I've watched a couple episodes and a couple supplemental clips on the good doctor YouTube just to really understand what we're dealing with here. I will say, like, the episodes are long. They're like 45 minutes long. I don't know why I thought like it was gonna be like a 30 minute show and it would be something that I could like breeze through kind of quick, but like, no, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty dense. Um, I guess what I'll say about it is like, it's, it's not the worst show I've ever watched. Like, at the very least, I was entertained by like all of the batshit stuff that was happening like literally in the pilot like within like the first three minutes like a kid fucking like get, gets knocked unconscious and like impaled and like almost dies and like not in a hospital like in an airport like it's some like final destination shit and then that's when like the good doctor sean comes in and like you know saves the day and does like a surgery with like a beer bottle and like a knife and stuff like it's you know obviously i'm not a doctor uh i can't speak to how accurate or inaccurate uh said medical events are throughout the show so i'm not gonna like knock it for that but you know it was entertaining trying to see you know this fully realized character uh you know kind of be in these situations and have to navigate it um as a person with autism do i think it do i think it nails like that portrayal uh no i think you know having known plenty of you know autistic people throughout my life i i don't know i don't know i guess i don't want to comment on it and say like it's inaccurate because i'm sure there are autistic people who like are you know are fully realized and seen in that portrayal um but I don't know, there were some things that were a little kind of, you know, corny and over the top, but I also think that's like what the purpose of this show is. Um, it's very like, when you're engaged in it, like you're engaged in it, you know what I mean? They do a good job of kind of like making the stakes of everything super high, the surgery, um, that shit is entertaining to me, you know? Um, the stuff that's like really boring is like the other stuff that like doesn't involve the main character. Like there's other doctors that like work on in the hospital or whatever. I don't give a fuck about them. Like they're like, 
<laughs> they're like really kind of boring like one-dimensional characters but like i don't know if it's just because you know they save all the good material for sean i think that's that's probably a lot of what it is but like you know uh he gets a lot of like the good kind of fun faster paced high energy moments and that's like when the show is at its best um do i think that i like will watch more of it uh i don't think so personally uh but i understand the intrigue it reminds me a lot of like old school kind of like ncis stuff like is that level of cheese like uh, maybe a little more but like you know I get it. Like, I get why people are compelled by it. It's not kind of like this total mystery to me. It doesn't do subtlety well, but like, sometimes you don't need TV to do subtlety well, you know? Um, so I don't hate it, but like, you know, whatever issues that people have with it, uh, in terms of like representation and like that kind of stuff, like, I also understand that side of the coin as well. Now, before all of the memes started popping off, it is worth noting here that there is a genuine fan base to this show that is appreciative of the performance from Highmore, and, I mean, just look at these comments on some good Doctor clips praising him and praising the writing of the show. So what exactly is the disconnect between these folks and Twitter shit posters who are bewildered that this show even exists? Well, let's get into it. To put it simply, cable TV is a dying empire that you haven't visited in so long, and it's more or less impossible for you to recognize the decay that has occurred around here in the last 10 to 15 years. Now I can speak specifically to this because my real life job is to make TV that old people watch. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kayla. I've spent the last several years of my life working in television news, which is a thing that is written, produced, and edited with your grandparents in mind. For example, I watch the nightly 6.30 p.m. broadcasts for CBS, NBC, and ABC every single night. After that, I usually watch Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. If you've ever watched that programming block of television, you'll notice that the commercials are for three things. Life insurance plans, prescription medications, and settlement attorneys. And that's because the bulk of people sitting down and watching cable TV every night are your grandparents. And The Good Doctor airs on Monday nights on ABC at 10 p.m. So whatever demographic is still awake and watching cable after all that, crossed over with whatever demographic is able to leave comments on ABC's YouTube channel, is the demographic of this show. Now if I had to guess, I'd say that all of the fans of The Good Doctor are not in their 70s and 80s. If I had to guess that some of them, sure, but I'm sure there are also a wide array of people who are into it, and I have a theory as to who and why. To put it simply, Twitter is not real life. Before the age of streaming, network TV used to hold a lot more prestige in people's homes, mainly because those networks were the only place that you could go to for any content at all. That generation of people is very much still around and many of them don't want to learn how to use a Roku television or put their credit card information into a computer. So naturally, they still hold cable television with the same amount of reverence as the majority of Americans did in the 80s and 90s. Additionally, in America, the digital divide is a very real thing. There are entire communities of people who do not have regular access to the internet by virtue of not only their socioeconomic status, but also just by where they live in the country. Again, if you're subscribed to me, you are probably not one of those people. And I can't pretend to be one of those people or know their mindset at all because I literally am from one of the most densely populated areas in North America. But with social media algorithms designed to keep us in bubbles of other like-minded individuals, it's easy to forget that there's a whole other America out there and they watch TV like the rest of us, just a little differently than the folks who make Barry and Succession fan cams. Fuck you! <laughs> And while The Good Doctor seems like it's a world away in terms of your own personal television taste, there are shows that still air on cable that have crossed over to, you know, the more terminally online audience. I remember This Was Us was big for a really long time, not just with moms, but with like people my age. Hell, I'm still a big Law & Order SVU fan, even though that show has been on since the 90s and parts of it definitely haven't aged well. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Even Abbott Elementary, which is a very good show, is a fresh take on the classic office comedy workplace sitcom, and it seems to be benefiting ABC greatly. I guess my point is that when it comes to content, the world is vast, and the internet makes it seem much more insular, as online conversation surrounding shows seems to be geared more toward the big prestige players that are trending every week. The Good Doctor is never going to get its own after show podcast or win an Emmy, you know? But while it's okay to critique the show and its portrayal of certain issues or groups of people, 
I think we should maybe lay off attacking and or mischaracterizing the folks who like watching it because judging by the show's subreddit community, they're not exactly enjoying all of the sudden attention that that community is now getting. It's okay to like shows that are a little cringe. I mean, I'll admit it. I was a pretty little liar stand for the majority of my teenage life and it probably ruined my brain if I'm being honest with you. That's about as cringy as it gets. And like, at least it's not one of the billions of police and fire reenactment shows that all take place in Chicago for some reason. Seriously, there is so much shit that takes place in Chicago, it's kind of funny. And to be honest, the Good Doctor memes aren't even the craziest cable television scene that I've seen this month. Here. That's from a show called 911 Lone Star. It has Rob Lowe in it. You're welcome. So yeah, hopefully you now have a better understanding of where this is all coming from. Critique the show, I think that's important and more than valid, but be kind to the community that earnestly enjoys it because in a parallel universe, they're making fun of clips of the White Lotus and calling you dumb for watching it. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.